What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Knowledge and Mileage podcast. My name is Chris Gethin. As usual, I'm your host today. So guys, if you've been liking this podcast so far, please do subscribe. Please do leave a review on iTunes and please do share with your friends. I would highly appreciate that. So over the last few weeks, I've been talking about the eight-week Hardcore Video Trainer reboot and giving you some additions, some hints, tips, whatever you want to call it, package it. It's additional content to keep you accountable, keep you consistent, to make sure that you see it all the way through to the end as a success and not somebody with regret. Today, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about fat loss in specificity The reason being because I see a lot of people uh, in my socials, in my groups, uh, talking about it and generalizing it and customizing it. It's not there to be customized, kids. If I thought it was any better to do it a certain way, guess what? I would have packaged it and given it you that way. But I haven't for a reason because the way that I've packaged it and delivered it is because it works. As you can see throughout all of my video trainers, my daily video trainers, I go through that transformation as well to prove to you that it can be done. People look at the before and after pictures and they say, that is Photoshop. You were just slouching. It's a tan. It was, you got, you shaved your hair and it was steroids. Well, those are the kind of remarks and responses that I want. However, if you want to get the same responses and comments and you take that and you should take that, Uh, as advantageous, not as a negative connotation. If you want the same, you have to follow the program the same. Don't come up with your own customized program. So let's start off with the cardio, kids. In this eight-week hardcore video trainer, I have suggested steady state cardio for you instead of uh, the general high-intensity interval training. The reason being is that don't you think your cortisol levels are high enough? You've created enough inflammation and damage in your body enough with five days a week of very intense volume-based heavy weights every single day of the week. Then you want to go and put out some high-intensity interval training on top of that because you've read some studies that you can actually burn through more calories Hell no. Of course, if you are on a program that gives you plenty of calories, plenty of antioxidants, plenty of fats, sure, go right ahead. If you want to build muscle and burn fat, then steady state is the way to go because you're in a calorie deficit, quite a large one on this program. You're trying to at least maintain muscle, hold on to that muscle while you can just shred off the fat. Now, if you hit the high-intensity interval training, your cortisol levels can get spiked yet again to the point that you're just not going to recover for your workouts. You are going to churn through too many calories that's going to tap into your muscle reserves. And, uh, you know, you're just not going to have the outputs as you once would to maintain or at least uh, build muscle. So there's a reason why I put steady state cardio in here. It's not to burn fat for that particular moment that you're performing the cardio. It's for you to spike your metabolism, to better digest and assimilate the calories that you're taking in throughout the days. Which leads to my next point, double cardio. So within this program, I've started off uh, with like 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the evening. Second week, it increases five minutes to 25, 25, third week, 30, 30, and so on and so forth. Some randoms out there decide it's a good idea to do cardio immediately before your workout, then immediately after your workout and say, there's my double cardio split. There's a reason why I say AM and PM cardio. You need to make sure that you have plenty of time between each because what you're trying to do with the morning's cardio is spike your metabolism again to better assimilate the calories that you take throughout the day. Get them used as an energy source and utilized efficiently for muscle growth. And then you do it again later on in the evening as your metabolism starts to slow down towards the end of the night. You still need to metabolize those foods because your body will want to go into storage and hibernation and hold all that fat. 
So we go into the gym again, spike that cardio once more for that another 20, 25, 30 minutes, whatever it is for that particular week of steady state cardio to, again, spike your metabolism. But you need to make sure that you have around an eight-hour gap between those cardios. Now, your first cardio should never, ever be immediately before your workout. What is the point of you getting amped up, psyched up, getting your pre-caged in you, and then utilizing a lot of that stored energy and and the calories that you need for that workout in your cardio? And then you go into your workout and you only perform like that 95% capacity because you've used 5% doing your cardio, whilst the rest of us are giving it 100% every single day. No, you hit the weights first if you are training in the morning or in the evening. And then you perform your cardio after. So you hit your weights immediately post-workout. You have your recaged recovery shake. And then you hit your cardio to better assimilate and digest that protein even faster so it can go to the localized area that you just worked out so you can recover quickly and efficiently. Because guess what? You only have about 23, 22 hours until your next workout. So the faster that you recover, the better. Okay? So remember, double cardios, baby. Now, consistent cardio. I see too many people saying, well, you know what? I took the dog for a walk. Or I went out with my kids, you know, and I stopped a couple of times. And But I did my 25 minutes. Doesn't count. You have to make sure that cardio is consistent. You've got to get your heart rate up to around 65% of your maximum heart rate, and then hold it there. It can take 15 minutes for your body to start utilizing fat as an energy source. So now if your heart rate dips, guess what? It's going to take time for your heart rate to get back up and sustain that 65% max, that sweet spot to burn fat and maintain your muscle. So think about that. Next time you're out doing the cardio, make sure that you don't have anything that holds you back. You hit a power walk as fast as you possibly can. Don't go anywhere near where there's crossings or stoplights or anything like that. You get in there and make it consistent. That's why, okay, it's good if you can go outside and you can get into the hills, but if you're in the gym, it's a more controlled environment. You can get on that Stairmaster and just go until the timer says no more. Okay, got it? Yeah, good. Right, fasted over non-fasted cardio, you will know from following my programs that I do suggest non-fasted cardio. I prefer you to wake up a good couple of hours even earlier. If that means three o'clock in the morning, so be it. And have your breakfast. Now, that should be a very light, high BV, high bioavailability uh, protein source and carbohydrates, so such as egg whites, their high BV value, or recaged even faster BV value, with oats, easy to digest. Let that digest for about an hour. Have your reca- uh, your pre-cage, sorry then, about 30, 45 minutes before you work out, hit the gym, and that is it. However, if you are one of these people that cannot um, uh, go out and work out on, uh, you know, after eating, then at the very least, Please take one scoop of fermented glutamine, one scoop of fermented cage muscle BCAAs, and one scoop of your hydrocharge. Drink that before you go out and hit your cardio, okay? So at least you have something that will increase your muscle protein synthesis, that will ward off catabolism, because guess what? You've already fasted for about eight hours through the night when you were sleeping, okay? Next point that I want to bring up when it comes to fat loss is clean burn. So as you know, that is the caged muscle fat burner that I strongly suggest. Why? Over any other fat loss supplement you can see out there, would I suggest clean burn? Easy. You have the key ingredients in there that are backed with studies and research. Yes, they are patented ingredients. And that is, and they are, 
efficaciously dosed. Each ingredient is efficaciously dosed that is backed with the studies and research to work. Now, if you look at the majority of the fat burners out there on the market, they are fairy dusted with these ingredients, if not cheaper and inferior ingredients. You don't have to look at the back of the label and see 15 ingredients to know that it works. You can have five key ingredients that are dosed correctly that are the proper patented ingredients for fat loss to ward off cravings, to level out your blood sugar levels, high ECGCs in green tea, for instance. So on saying that, let me go through some of the ingredients in there. You've got your chromate, which is the patented version of your chromium piclinate. Great for leveling out those blood sugar levels. Again, Gymnema sylvestra, which is an um, an ingredient from India, and in Indian, it means sugar destroyer. Help ward off those cravings that you get when you're on a diet. There, there is a reason why you're supposed to take the two tablets three times a day, throughout the day, so you can have a sustained release of these ingredients to ward off those cravings, to level out your blood sugar levels, to ensure that you are in constant thermogenesis, okay? Which leads me to the thermogenic ingredient, Capsimax. That is the patented version of the capsinoids that you'll find in uh, your hot peppers, your, your capsicum, okay? So to keep you at a higher core temperature to keep you in a thermogenic state to burn off more calories and obviously you have the green tea which is the 50 percent ecgc not just all the polys that gives you great antioxidant value remember we are here to burn fat and the chromate the chromate is there to shuttle your fat into your energy source, your engine, which is the mitochondria. So we can utilize fat as an energy for output. Fantastic. We don't want to store it, that's for sure. Okay. So remember the clean burn, essential three times a day. Now, fluid consum consumption is something that is vastly overlooked for performance and for fat burning. I strongly suggest that you get plenty of fluid. I like, I like to go for at least a gallon a day. And all dependent on how much I'm going to be sweating on that day, dependent on the climate, dependent on how active I am, what body part is dependent if I drink a little bit more than that or not, okay? And if I'm having ice cold water, obviously my body core temperature has to heat that up properly until it can absorb it into a body temperature, Okay, so you utilize energy subconsciously, inadvertently, just taking in cold water or ice cold water. But the more water that you're able to drink up, you know, like I said, around a gallon, then that's going to be easier to take these fat reserves, these calories into the bloodstream than the toxins into the bloodstream and get out of the body, okay? So make sure that you are extremely hydrated. Of course, you're gonna perform better, you're gonna have more energy, you're gonna have a better brain function, you're just gonna be overall better, okay? Your body is made up of around 70% fluid, so hey, go figure, drink. Uh, lastly, I want to bring up, when it comes to the fat loss, I see some people following the, if it fits your macros diet, the double I F Y M. Hell no, should you be following that program whilst you are on the eight-week hardcore video program. Don't follow that nutritional protocol, not on my watch. Um, if it fits your macros, to a certain degree, works with some plans. If you are eating the right adequate foods that do not cause an inflammatory response, i.e. sugars, okay, or you know, excess gluten or excess dairy. I would suggest that you follow my program, the reason being because the more meals that you have frequently, the better your metabolism is going to be spiked, your body core temperature is going to be higher, your body will assimilate smaller food portions bigger, bit better than a big food portion. When you take a big food portion, it can take a lot of energy just to break it down, but again, it's all dependent on the food that you're eating. When people are following the double I F Y M protocol, it seems to give them a free ticket to go out and just eat whatever they want and gorge and feel good about that. How is that good? How is that good for you? If you are eating sugars, if you are eating fats, trans fats, 
that's going to give you an inflammatory response. It's not going to be good for your gut microbiome. That is going to send a response into your brain, which is going to be a chemical reaction, which is just going to have an adverse reaction. All of a sudden, your bad bacteria in your gut is going to outweigh the good bacteria in your gut. It's not supposed to be that way. You're supposed to have a good bacteria dialogue within your microbiome to help you break down these foods, to help build your immune system, to help have a healthy chemical response to your brain, because unless you want to possibly fall into the realms of having dementia, anxiety, Alzheimer's, depression, anger, and have a low immune system, you definitely want to eat a healthier diet protocol. Don't get caught into the if it fits your macros, giving you the justification to be complacent to eat a load of shit because you're weak. My program is not for the weak. If you are one of those people, go follow someone else's program, man. I got no bias against you. Just don't do it on my watch, okay? Anyway, guys, if you liked this episode or if you liked any of the knowledge and mileage podcast episodes, you know what to do, kids. You got to leave a review on iTunes, please. And you got to subscribe. And I would really appreciate your feedback and to share it with everybody else. My name is Chris Gethin. This is the Knowledge and Mileage Podcast. Until next week, I am out.